Good morning. Welcome to Parkville Presbyterian, a place where everyone is loved and everyone belongs. This morning, Pastor Steve is on vacation, and we are joined by a guest preacher, the Reverend Sarah Butler. Reverend Butler is a friend of Pastor Steve and Pastor Carrie from their time in St. Joseph, and it is a pleasure to have us ever join us today. Our music director, Dr. Sarah Lyons, is also on vacation today, and we are blessed to have our own Marcy Gaston filling in for her. Thank you, Marcy. As we dive into worship this morning, you should know that there are several special worship services coming up. Next Sunday, February 27th, is Transfiguration Sunday, when we remember Jesus shining in transcendental light on the mountaintop. It was soon after that moment that his, in his life that he turned his face to go toward Jerusalem, beginning the journey that we commemorate through the season of Lent. Lent begins with Ash Wednesday on March 2nd and continues through Easter. More details about our Ash Wednesday commemorations and our focus for the Lenten season can be found in your bulletin. Lenten devotionals are also available in print in the Narthex or electronically through our congregational email. As we begin our time for of worship, let us call ourselves to worship using the words printed in our bulletin. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord to do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and God will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in the one, and God will act. The Lord God will make your vindication shine like the light, and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it leads evil to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. The meek shall inherit the land, and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord, who is their refuge in the time of trouble. According to the first letter of John, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is righteous and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us of unrighteousness. Therefore, with confidence in the grace of God, let us confess our sins to the Lord using the prayer of confession printed in our bulletins. Let us pray. God of love and justice, we long for peace within and peace without. We long for harmony in our families, for serenity in the midst of struggle. We long for the day when our homes will be a dwelling place for your love. Yet we confess that we are often anxious. We do not trust each other, and we harbor violence. We are not willing to take the risks and make the sacrifices that love requires. Look upon us with kindness and grace. Rule in our homes and in all the world. Show us how to walk in your paths through the mercy of our Savior. Amen. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now as forgiven children of God, at peace with God and with one another, let us exchange signs of peace. Respecting social distance, let us look each other in the eye, place our hands over our hearts, and greet one another in peace. May the peace of Christ be with you, and also with you.
This is a, ah, okay, there we go, there we are, now we're on. This is a, a special time for the young folks, and once again, and this happens so often when you're the substitute preacher, <gasps> yes, thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Your shoe is untied. And the only reason I mention that is because last year when my shoe was untied, I stepped on it and fell. And it was not fun at all. Anybody else ever do that? Okay, can you raise your hands because it's hard to see the masks going and I feel completely stupid. Okay, there we go. Well, today when we talk to the, the older people here, we're going to talk a lot about the things that Jesus said to people that were really wonderful things. And we're also going to talk about salt and how important it is, and light and how important that is. Do you think light is important? Yeah. So do you have light in your bedroom? Do you have a lamp too? So what do you do when the lights go out and it's dark? All right. Well, I don't have a little night light, but I did bring some other things. You probably know what all these are already. These are different kinds of flashlights. And some are really tiny. One is really big. Sorry. <laughs> and one is for when you're something falls and you can't reach it. Because you can shine a light in a really tiny, dark place. And then if you find what you're looking for, there's even a magnet on the end. So you can pick stuff up. And it bends. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I got this for my motorcycle because I only had it like two months and I dropped a screw right into the middle of it. And my fingers were not long enough. When we talk to the, read the scripture today, we're going to talk about light and dark and how it's important to be light and have a light, especially when other people need one. Because, oh my gosh, what good would it be if it was dark in your bedroom and you had a light, but you didn't turn it on? Would that be good? Nah. 
And what if your parents down the hall needed a light because they didn't have one and you stayed in your bedroom with your light and didn't help them? Would that be good? No. And the same thing is true when you're an adult. No matter what your light looks like or how big it is, you have to turn it on to help yourself and you have to shine it around to help other people. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving me light, light in my bedroom, light in my life. Help me, Lord, to see in the darkness, and help me, Lord, to help others see too. Amen. And now, over there, if you look, I have some pages. You could take one bit with you. See them? On the one side is something to color, and on the other is a word search. And for those of you kids who are a little bit taller, if you want to come and get one later on, uh, I made a bunch. And before I continue with the reading of scripture, I want to apologize to our amazing tech staff for picking up the wrong microphone. So, mia culpa. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 5, the first 15 verses. Hear the word of the Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. 
But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. And no one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. My friends, the word of God for the people. If you've been reading along in the Gospel of Matthew, a lot has happened in these first four chapters. The birth of Jesus, the genealogy of his supposed father, Joseph, the Magi, the flight into Egypt, and even the beginning of the ministry of John the Baptist. And now, the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. And he looks around at the multitudes and he goes up to a mountain and sits down. I've always loved that. You know, back in the old days, it used to be that whoever was giving the teaching would read the scripture and sit down. And all y'all will be standing up. I think that's so it keeps you awake when the pastor talks too long. He sits down and the disciples come to him and he begins to teach them. The original hearers of this gospel were people, were, were Jewish people, and they would know what happens when you go to a mountain. That is where people see God. That is where Moses went when he brought down the commandments of God. And so when they see Jesus, this wonderful young prophet going up, they have that same expectation. What new word will he bring from God? What new commandment, what new way to be holy in the sight of God will he bring them? And Jesus opens his mouth to speak. Blessed are. We can't imagine how upside down this was to those first century hearers because they were expecting something more like Moses. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Here are the commandments. Here's all the stuff you must do if you are going to be faithful. And if you don't, guess what happens? And Jesus says, Blessed are. In the time of Jesus and even today when Jewish scholars give up to preach before their congregations, they usually quote other people. This is something I learned in seminary when back in those days it was tough going to be a woman pastor. And another woman pastor told me when you got bad news to tell them, Tell them, scripture says. <laughs> now, in my own life, I have widened that out a bit. I will also say things like commentators tell us, and even theologians believe. <laughs> that way, it gets them mad at the other guy and not me. But that is what they are expecting from Jesus. They want something like, you read in Isaiah that this. Or you read the words of Hosea that this. And yet, and we'll hear it elsewhere in scripture, here is someone with a new message and he speaks with authority. Blessed are. In Matthew's gospel, these blessings are quite different from those that we read about in Luke. 
Luke, who focuses his gospel on the poor and the downtrodden, who says, blessed are you who are poor, so you know that God hasn't forgotten you. In Matthew's gospel, it is the poor in spirit. It is those who are on the right path toward God, but are hindered by society, who are fighting for the right and hindered by the wrong, that he is addressing this to. Blessed are. Instead of what other prophets had been saying, blessed are you if you do this, then God will bless you. Or worse yet, if you don't do this, then God will curse you. He says, you already are blessed. You already are part of God's kingdom. You already are beloved people of God. And because you are, all these things happen. To the people in the first century, this was completely upside down. To the people in fir the first century, you earned goodness and earned God's grace by doing all the right things right. And if you were blessed by God, you could show it because you had nice clothes, a big house, lots of sons, a wife who could cook. Are you blessed yet, honey? That's my husband back there. If you were blessed, they thought, you had all these outward signs of it. You had respect in the marketplace and in the street corner. Your word was important. And Jesus is saying, none of this is true. None of this matters. Blessed are you when you're poor in spirit when you mourn, when others ridicule and persecute you for doing the right thing instead of the easy thing. Commentators will say, ah, see? Commentators will tell you that this portion of the, the Sermon on the Mount is delivered to the disciples who come up and gather around because this saying is too hard. that later he will address the multitudes. But right now, those disciples need to know that they're going in the right direction, that they are on the right path, that they are already beloved of God and don't have to prove anything to anybody. But... There is that caveat that we hear in the last portion of this morning's gospel lesson. You all are the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. You know, it's going to bring some salt today. And you know, what's a pound of salt caught? Less than a buck, right? We throw it away almost. We put it on the sidewalk to melt all that snow and ice. But when Jesus is writing, salt is expensive. Salt is important. In a time when there's no refrigerator, salt is how you preserve food. Not just a seasoning, but a preservative. You put salt in a wound. When you make a covenant with a fellow Jew, you actually throw salt over your shoulder. We get the word salary from a Roman soldier being worth his salt. You're the salt of the earth. You are what makes things wonderful. You are what preserves the right. You are what gives life. But if you've lost your savor, what good are you? You are the light of the world. 
you and your night lights in your bedroom and your flashlights and the, the lights on your phone and the lights in your heart are what give light to the world. But if you keep that light to yourself, you keep it turned off. If maybe your light got turned on today when you parked your car in the parking lot and here it is all shiny and, and you turn it back off when you leave to go because you got to fit in with the world. Jesus says, it's no good either. We are called to be the light for the world. We are called to be that light when we go out, when we go home, when we go to our work or our school or our senior center or the grocery store. People should see us and know Jesus. People should receive that light from us that we have already gotten from on high. Because if we do, then why bother to turn it on at all? What a sad thing for the world. Going back up a few verses, blessed are the, those of you if the world persecutes you for being that light. Jesus knows that being the light is not easy. Being the light means doing what is right, even when it's not popular, even when it's expensive, even when it takes your time and your reputation and your friends. Jesus calls us to have the courage to stand up and be light. I don't know how many, maybe a lot of you grew up Presbyterian and you don't remember taking the vows of membership when you became members of a congregation. But do you know that we don't ask you hardly a single word about your theology? As important as our theology is to us, as much as we are people of the book and doing the right things right, we don't ask you any of those questions. We don't ask what you think about uh, your theology of redemption, about the five pillars of Calvinism, your theology of baptism, or even your theology of communion? We ask if you believe in Jesus. We ask if you will be a kind member of your congregation, bringing the light of God to the world. And we ask you for your time and your talent and your treasure. Somehow in a world that is overly concerned with making the church budget, we have forgotten about those first two things. We think somehow that putting your check in or your, you, you know, your automatic uh, deposit from your checking account is all that's required. And it's only the tiniest bit because God wants our time, our lives our talent and our abilities to go out and be God's salt and God's light. And my friends, if you remember the end of all those Beatitudes, we will receive more than we can imagine through the glory of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we turn to... Oops. Is this on? Hello? Okay. Now we turn to a time of prayer, and we'll follow our recent practice and start with prayers of joy, prayers of uh, hope, prayers of wonder.
Now we'll move to prayers of concern. What do we have to offer God today in terms of prayers of joy, things that are wonderful that we have seen this week? Do we have any good news? The snow is pretty. The, the snow is pretty. And, and I'll, I'll offer another prayer. We're, we're glad that it's going to be in the 50s today because the snow will melt. That will also be good. Other prayers of joy. Yes. We're delighted to have Karen back with us. It's a wonderful prayer. Anything other? Prayers of concern. What do we have to offer God today in terms of prayers of concern? Melissa. So um, a lot of you probably know Clark Stokes, who used to go here many years ago. He got diagnosed with Alzheimer's, I think, about 10 years ago, and he's with his family in St. Louis. And through the swim family, because he was a swim coach, I just learned yesterday that they're really struggling. He's gone into care, and he's having a lot of issues, and um, you know, he's requiring a facility. They've set up a GoFundMe to help pay for it, but he's really, they're struggling a lot. He's confused, and, you know, he's, his, his downhill slide has really escalated in the last several months. So, the family can use prayers. That's the great Clark Stokes, who was a member of this church, along with his family, a Joey, we remember as well. Um, is it possible to get that GoFundMe maybe put in our Thursday bulletin? I'm not sure what that process is, but uh, that would be good to share with everybody. That's good. We, of course, continue to remember Michael Gunn, whose life we celebrated in this sanctuary on Wednesday, and remember Whitaker and Ingle and Jess and the family and friends of Michael uh, upon his passing. So that's, that's in our hearts as well. Other prayers of concern? Yes, Linda. Linda offers continued prayers for Marian Bleich, who's now in hospice care, along with Steve. Joyce? Thank you, Joyce. Joyce offers thanks to Sarah for her sermon this morning. Other prayers? Jan. Uh, the uh, disruption and problems in uh, Keith and uh, prayer for uh, good reconciliation of that conflict. Jan lifts up the, the people of Ukraine and of Russia and the difficulties between them and hoping for a good outcome there. Thank you. Others, I thought some more heads. Doug. My sister Jan. Doug lifts up Sean, who is the uh, significant other of his sister, uh, who lost his, his battle uh, with illness yesterday. So we raised them up as well. Other prayers? Yes, Susan. Susan lifts up her great niece and difficulties that she's having, and we hope for better outcomes. Anything else? Others? Yes, go right ahead. I just like to lift up our schools and the chaos surrounding the ongoing COVID restrictions, easing of COVID restrictions, snow days, and all of that. It's uh, a challenge for families and for schools as well. Lots of prayers for people, for both students and teachers and administrators in the school and system. Parents. And families, yes, parents too, they're important. Anything else? Any, yes, Marla. Right. Um, families, with uh, people who struggle with mental health issues, my family was struggling yesterday, and uh, for thanks for being able to reach out to people and find resources. Marcia lists up people who are struggling with mental health issues for resources to help with those issues. Pray with me now. Lord, our creator, our rock, our hope, 
We ask that you attend the prayers offered here this morning. Gather your people and give us solace. Mold our hearts and our hands to be more caring, more generous, more loving. We ask all of this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends, it is my great joy to be here today with you that we might celebrate the Lord's Supper. This is the Lord's table. Happy are we who are called to this supper and happy are we to understand that all are here welcomed. My friends, on the night that Jesus was given over into the hands of those who would crucify him, he sat at the table with his disciples. He looked around the room and even though he'd been with them for three years, he knew they still didn't understand everything. He knew that one would betray him that very night that another would deny knowing him and that they would all run and hide. He knew too that their lives would not be easy, that they would indeed go to the ends of the earth to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And looking around that table, he loved them, even as he loves you. During the meal, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and said, take this and eat of it, all of you, because this is my body broken for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave God both thanks and praise, and he took the cup and gave it to the disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you do it, in remembrance of me. My friends, whenever we take this bread or drink this cup, we proclaim his death, his resurrection, his continuing salt and light in the world until he comes again. My friend, the bread of life the cup of salvation. Let us celebrate together.
My friends, this morning as we say our prayer after communion, I will start with a prayer and then we will pray together the Lord's Prayer, which is printed in your bulletin. Let's bow our heads together. Holy God, you are faithful indeed, the fountain of all holiness. And we thank you, Lord, for the gift of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, whose life, death, and resurrection we celebrate this morning. We thank you, Lord, for these gifts of bread and juice that we might come together as the family of God, united at one table, at one communion, at one Eucharist, all equal, beloved, and blessed in God's sight. Holy God, we thank you and we praise you even as we come together to pray as Jesus taught those early disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, through the ministries of this church, we live our callings as God's people. We minister alongside the homeless, teach our children and are taught by our children, and reach out to our community in fellowship and faith. If you would like to participate financially in these and other ministries, you can give a financial gift in the offering plate outside the sanctuary through a check mailed to the church, scheduled withdrawals from your bank, and online at our website. However you give and whatever you give, may all our gifts of time, talent, love, and resources be blessed for growing the kingdom of God. Let us worship God one more time in song. into this day to love and serve the God who loves you. Know that you are blessed of God and that you are salt and light for the earth. 
Go forth in courage and in love and in grace and in mercy. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sustainer. Amen.